Hi and welcome to the second tutorial about the object detection algorithm YOLO. In the first video, we uh, saw how to create a training data for training these neural networks. You have to have images and you have to have the training labels which are attached to those images. Those training labels are giving the information about the object which is there in the image and its location. And now, um, we missed one part before which was the loss terms. The loss terms are what are used by the networks to minimize the difference between the vector which the network outputs to the true label. So let me just uh, take you back to the program which we were working with, which was the vanilla YOLO. And in this program, uh, we are asking our network to output four of these boxes. But in our training level, we only made one box, which was the ground truth box. So I told you that we have to duplicate some of the labels so that uh, the dimension of uh, the vector, which is the training label, should match the dimension of the vector which the network is going to output. So first, let me just show you by just adding this print statement. So I didn't do anything to the code. I literally just asked it to print these uh, training labels for all of the 5000 images that uh, are input in the program. So first, I just want to show you those training labels. So don't get scared about these numbers. These are uh, just the training labels attached to these 5000 images. And I'm just waiting for it to complete this run. So I can focus on just one of these vectors and all of them have the same dimensions. So one, two, three, four, the first four components are the classes and then uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the X and the Y of this because it is located at the center, right? Uh, the object and then these two coordinates are the height and the width, these two components. And this is the confidence uh, of there being an object or not there being an object. And then I'm repeating these values four times because then uh, the uh, ground truth box is still the same, but the um, length of the vector, which the network is now going to output will be actually this. And what the network has to learn is how to uh, produce the numbers for the images that are going inside the network, which are actually close to these labels, which I'm attaching. And network does this by minimizing the loss a loss function. The loss function is kind of a difference between the numbers which the network is giving and the true labels. And when this uh, uh, loss becomes less and less, then you can say, okay, the, now the network has learned what the object is and where to find it. And so for now, for, for this, we have to uh, go back to our program. I'm going to take you to the, uh, to the part of the function which actually calculates this loss. And this is called this custom loss. The custom loss uh, uh, term splits your vector, uh, the training vector and the predicted vector into different components. The first four components in our case correspond to the class to which uh, the object belongs to. So from zero to the categories, I'm making a vector which contains only the information about the class. Then uh, the rest of the boxes, uh, which are after this fourth component till the end, they can be split into uh, the X and the Y component the height and the width and the confidence. So for these boxes, after the number of categories, the two of the numbers are the X and the Y. The next two are the height and the width. And the last one is the confidence of there being an object or not there being an object. And now I make these loss terms. This is my class loss. And uh, how you make the loss terms can affect seriously the performance of the network. For example, usually for classification problems, we don't use uh, square losses. We use categorical cross entropy. But for this example, I just use the square loss because I wanted to see the performance of uh, what does this loss term do. But you can also play around with the loss term and say, okay, I want to use categorical cross entropy and all of these are implemented in Keras, which you are calling through your import statement, uh, which was which is written on the top. And then you're making these loss terms, which are essentially the difference between the true label and the predicted label of the network and for the confidence you are again having this uh, different boxes which the network is predicting it is calculating the overlap of those boxes with the ground truth box and it is coming up based upon this calculation with the confidence term if it is close to one and your ground truth label is one for the confidence it means uh, the network is a uh, network is making correct boxes otherwise the network will try to minimize this loss so that it gets close to the ground truth label and what it is minimizing is a sum of all of these loss terms because now I calculate the individual loss terms based upon these uh, different components of the vector. 
but then I can just add up all of these loss terms and I can say ask my network to minimize this loss term and learn uh, um, after it minimizes this loss term how to produce correct set of labels and this is what we saw before like in the example that we just ran before I'm just going to uh, remove this print statement and I'm just going to bring up the plot that I created for testing my network my trained network on right so for this I just have to run this program without the training flag then it will just output uh, um, the final result uh, which uh, it is um, getting after applying the prediction on the images that it hasn't seen before and the final result is shown in terms of uh, the the boxes which it makes on the objects it finds in the images this is what you have seen before but i'm just going to show you again so for this network which was trained with these loss terms that you just uh, that you just saw this is the output which it gives me let i'll just let it uh, get a bit bigger so, so you see the boxes are quite right but not really that precise so now the thing comes that maybe we can do something with these losses you know we can play around with these loss terms and we can get better results is it possible yeah it is possible so this is what i did in my other example so if you look at my other file which comes with this um we, somehow it's not getting the access to this one oh sorry right so this one this file is the lambda code it's the same um, program everything except i change just one thing in my loss function i put more weight on the x y and the height width loss as compared to the confidence and the class loss so before you had one here essentially for all of this because all of the losses were treated equally but if let's say i want to lay more stress on the x y coordinate being more precise and the bounding box being more precise i can do this by putting more weight on this during the training and i frame my network with this loss term and i'm just going to show you uh, the output which this network actually gives me and yeah. yeah i can just try with this one so i'm going to run the lambda code program which was the net which is the network which has been trained with this uh, new loss term it's already trained so i'm just uh, showing you the results for the same images that you saw the results for when there was no 1.5 in the coordinate loss and now uh, with this i am actually getting a bit tighter boxes with more precise location as compared to what i was getting before so um so you can see the classification loss is uh, is pretty good it's 97 percent sure of uh, uh, the object being there and then look at the boxes if you go scroll back to the image and look at the boxes that you were getting before now you're getting more tighter boxes and more precise location and this effect just happened because i changed one thing in the loss function so you can see how these parameters that you can change in the loss functions can have an effect on uh, the results that you get in the end and now um, you have learned how to make the images for training a neural network you have trained a simple neural network to do the object detection and now in the next few tutorials i'm going to add complexity to what you have learned to show you a lot of things which are not possible with simple code but how you add more features it gets more complex and it can accomplish more things it can be more made more user friendly and you don't have to work with these terminal environments but those are the complications which come step by step so for now just uh, play around with these two programs which are all on github this program generates the data sets and you have to create these two uh, directories so that it can create images and labels over here then you have the simple program which is vanilla yolo which has the simple loss terms nothing complicated in in the uh, in terms of the weights or anything and you can train your uh, network the simple network which will write this h5 file and then it will display the results that uh, 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 results after training or you can train this lambda code which has a different loss term which uh, gives more weight to the coordinates so it is uh, asking the network to be more precise on the lo location on localization of the of the object 
and it produces this h5 file which then gives you the results and uh, once uh, you have, you just uh, spend some time with this one and then i will uh, keep adding more complex codes in the same repository so you will see how things grow from something simple to something more complicated because you need more features you need more user friendliness and you need to control your own code and how and you need to play around with these parameters to find the best parameters for example the network that i'm using right now is like only a few layer network but the industrial scale networks they are much more complicated than this they have more complex architecture but we will slowly go down to that but first we just get, want to get started in using these codes ourselves and yeah so i'm just going to end this tutorial over here uh, wait for the next one